Have you ever felt a transformation? To be changed, to not stay the same? Now, I'd venture to guess that many of us have. In the waters of baptism, we experience transformation, and as we learn, grow, and live out our faith, the transformation continues. Now, salvation is a one-time experience, but transformation is a continual process. And so we find outlets that speak to us, that provide avenues for us to grow, to transform. We join circles, small groups, Bible studies. We serve in the community. We break bread with our neighbors. We give financially. We share of our time and talents on things that matter to us and ultimately, things that matter to God. What are the ways that you've been transformed? And how do you let that transformation drip into your daily life? Who are you becoming? Who have you been? And how do those two things intertwine? Now, transformation is a key part of the Christian walk. I think Lent's the perfect season to discern your life, who you've been, who you are, and who you're becoming. Doing this isn't gonna make you perfect. Far from it, in fact. But we're invited into this action nonetheless, trusting that the perfection of the triune God is more than enough, and that the people that surround us in this very space can be the support system needed to better live into this reality. When we're authentic in this process, we can become bold in our strength, bold in our weakness even, and bold in our reliance on Jesus. And when we look at people like Saul, we see change. Where their perfection lacked, God's perfection transformed. It doesn't just change our past, our quirks, our experiences, but it gives a baseline to grow from and a heck of a testimony to look back on as we move forward. This becomes good news, not just for you, but for those that knew you then, those that know you now, and those that will benefit from the work of God within you. Now, the movement of God isn't limited to a single time or space. It's present in your life. It's present in the lives of countless people throughout the scriptures. It's changed them from within, and it can't help but overflow into their lives, and their families, their friendships, their work. It's all been changed. Have you ever ran into an old friend, and as you walk away, you think to yourself, there's something different about them, but what is it? I hear story after story of a change in lifestyle, a change in thinking, a change from within that affects everything we do. Now, we're not perfect, but the transforming power of Jesus is. It's not about our past, but the work of God in our present as we walk faithfully toward the future as bold and transformed people of the way. So what's next? Well, it's another ingredient that brings action. Not because our salvation depends on it, but because our salvation leads to it. We testify. We're bold in our faith, in the transforming power of God. And we don't keep it to ourselves because we can't. The Spirit guides us, and as uncomfortable as that might be at times, it empowers us to share the love of God with all whom we encounter. No exceptions. This was Saul. Yes, that Saul. The one that was, well, not exactly a person of faith. As you heard in our preaching text, he was quite the opposite, in fact. But he had a wild transformation, one that left even Jesus' most faithful disciples unsure if it could be true. But he took a step of faith, and countless lives were changed because of it. Now, there are times we choose not to. There are times we feel convicted about our decisions. There are times we don't feel like being very bold. But our limitations don't limit God's expectations. Our limitations don't limit God's movement. Our limitations don't limit God's love for others or God's love for us. Saul had a decision to make. Would he continue to hold on to who he'd been? Or would he let go and embrace who he was becoming? What if the answer is a little more complicated than that? And the very history he held made him fearful for his life because others were fearful of their lives. Saul could have moved forward pretending his past experiences didn't happen. But instead, God used them to reach the Gentiles. And God wants to use you to reach your friends, your families, your schools, your workplaces, with the same grace, hope, peace, and love that you and Saul have experienced, just as you are. When our perfection lacks, God's perfection transforms. Being broken doesn't define us. Being scared doesn't define us. Hurting doesn't define us. Loneliness doesn't define us. What defines us is our identity. 
not as sinful human in need of Savior, but beloved children of God, love beyond measure. And with God's help, we live boldly into this identity. And because it's not our work, but God's, we prayerfully discern ways to live out our faith. We follow God's lead. We don't take credit. The transaction was done on our behalf. Instead, we testify to the life-changing love that we've experienced in Christ Jesus. This is the work that we're called to do boldly. This is the work that Saul did in the scriptures, especially as he was transformed into Paul. He had every reason to be fearful. He had every reason to not be bold. But the transforming work of Jesus, it led him to a life of testifying boldly. He went from place to place and in many ways took steps outside of his comfort zone, certainly steps outside of safety. In the book of Acts, when the salt of Paul transformation took place, he was affirmed in this reality. But compelled by the life change and guiding of the triune God, he embarked from city to city sharing the gospel. And the truth is, not all of Paul's missions were a success, at least not by our standards. Even more so, they were missions that didn't meet his own expectations. And that can be a dangerous thing, trying to meet expectations. Even for me, as a pastor called to serve this faith community, I've experienced this reality firsthand. As the people of Good Shepherd, you too experience the dance of expectations. As you look at the things that we offer, you wish that there was less of this and more of that. You look back at the last year and a half plus, and maybe you wish it had gone a little bit differently. I want this need met in my life. I expect a Lutheran church to look like this. The truth is, I wish for things too. I want things too. I expect things too. And together, we can at times live boldly into transactional Christianity. Instead of living boldly into the proclamation, this transformation that got us here in the first place. Now, if we look down the pew or couch, we're bound to make eye contact with someone that's wired differently than us. Different desires, different expectations, different needs. If church only ends up being about meeting these desires, these needs, these expectations, then we should just cut the lights and head to the lake. Because if it's only about these transactions, then we are missing the bigger picture. We're missing out on an opportunity to come as we are and be open to something that's outside of ourselves. This is what happens when individuals gather together in community. This is what happens when we, the church, confess our sins, take part in the sacraments, and commit to journeying together in faith, no matter what our past may be. Not because it's easy, not because we get something out of it, but because it's what we're called to do because it makes a difference in this world that God created and loves. Because this gospel truth is worth sharing. Because God's love is worth testifying to. We're called to do it boldly. And we're not alone in this work. Now we are people of faith, together led by God to participate in this very mission that Saul and Paul committed to. We're called to testify to God's love, even if it takes us outside of our comfort zone. Now, God did this work before us, and he, God does it within us today, and he goes on to prepare a way for us in the future. As we consider how this text fits in with our teaching series, The Struggle is Real, we're reminded that for Saul, this call to transformation and action was not a one-time thing, something to do and check off his list. Now, the climate certainly could have encouraged him to run off to the next location, but he didn't do that. Throughout other scripture verses in the Bible, we actually see Saul and Paul doing that very thing. He gathered friends and headed out to visit the places that they ministered to in the past. Truly, he wanted to see if the mission was still being lived out. If people are coming to faith, if the lights are still on, if you will. Along the journey, he found time for arguments. He found time for preaching, sometimes at the same time. He gave visions. He converted men and women, and he even spent a little time in the slammer. Households came to the Lord because of his bold testimony. But he's no longer interested in just preaching Jesus as Messiah within the synagogue. He's building the church among the Gentiles. And so Paul now puts down roots. He opened up his home. He built up local leaders. He poured into the community. He boldly testified for a year and a half. He equipped the church to be the church, discerned God's call, and continued on this journey. This was the life that Paul was called to live, 
And the struggle was so real that Paul didn't have to commit to doing this. He had power in his past life as Saul, but he used that shaky past for a beautiful future of action, the life that he was called to by the Lord. I wonder, what life are you feeling called to live, Good Shepherd? The dilemma for many of us is we don't have, feel equipped to do this work. We're fearful of failure, of what our friends and family might think if we committed to put the time in to see progress. Remember, people had thoughts about Saul and Paul too. And certainly, that had to weigh on him. But he trusted. He had the scales fall off his eyes and he saw the promise. And he committed to the journey ahead. God invited him to respond, and he did. And God is asking you to do the same. So what might God be asking you to do? No matter what it is, we have the option to say, yes, Lord. Even with my imperfections, I'm going to trust that you're in control. And then we begin our journey. Even when the struggle is real. Paul left the synagogue to do this very thing. And we take steps to imagine what faithful living looks like for each of us. Maybe it's committing to serving in the Fargo-Moorhead area, at places near and dear to your heart. Maybe it's taking a step outside of your comfort zone in a new ministry. Maybe it's something we've never even done before, and we won't do unless you take a bold step. Imagine the impact it could make for people here today and those who have never heard the bold proclamation of Jesus' name. And so, Good Shepherd, may we let our past enhance our future taking risks, living faithfully, and boldly testifying to the life-changing love of God. You have a testimony, a story to share. Let's live it out so that all may know. Amen.